Hey guys, Level Cap here. Today we're going to be updating on Overwatch news and talking a little bit about the character Bastion and how important he is to team play. But uh, if you haven't been following BlizzCon and the announcements there, Overwatch has been announced to be coming out on both console platforms, PS4 and Xbox One. The price point for the base game is going to be $40. Uh, and if you want the Origins Edition, which is going to give you skins and all these other perks and stuff like that, it'll be $60. No tactical advantage, but uh, just cosmetic advantages. Now, this price point definitely came as a surprise to myself and a lot of other people who were almost certain that it was going to be a free-to-play title just because it kind of resembles a lot of other games now that are made as free-to-play games. But on one hand, I'm kind of happy that there is a pretty steep price point, $40. I mean, it seems steep, although most games cost 60 You can get the Origin Edition for $60 that will give you um, custom skins and whatever, cool emblems, that kind of stuff. But uh, $40 means that it's going to be a major hacker deterrent. If you think about a lot of the free-to-play competitive games out there, there's a lot of hackers in them because there's no real penalty for getting your account banned. You just get a new account, make a new email, register a new account, you're good to go. But if you get a $40 account banned, then you gotta buy back in for $40. It's far less attractive to the hacking community out there. And especially if Blizzard does a good job with their anti-hacking software, um, then I think we could have a game that is gonna be almost hacker-free. Now, it's also pretty big news that this game is coming out for console. Aside from the Diablo franchise, Blizzard hasn't really made a big console push on many platforms, but this game does make sense on console. I think the competitive background will definitely be on PC. The game plays wonderfully on PC. I'm addicted to it. I love playing the beta right now. Um, tons of strategy. And I think the only thing that this game has going against it is that it's a little bit tricky to market because unless you've played it, all you see is something that looks like a cartoony shooter. Granted, the graphics are very nice, a uh, very good looking cartoony shooter, but for the most part, that doesn't necessarily sell games. I think this is one of the few games that you actually have to play in order to understand how cool and how fun and addictive it can be. Also, rumor has it that the open beta is starting relatively soon, so that means you guys can actually join in and see what the heck I'm talking about. Now let's talk about Bastion, because he is a core player. I find him to be an extremely useful player, especially when playing casually, as in not with a pre-made team that's on comms and communicating constantly. Bastion is absolutely great because he's not easily overpowered. You need an organized team uh, that knows where Bastion is and knows how to take him out efficiently. Otherwise, he can just pretty much do massive damage and take out many, many players on the enemy team. And from these clips you're watching here, you'll see that I've taken out three or even four players when they assault. And if you've played over Overwatch, taking out that many characters by yourself on an assault is a huge deal. Since teams are only made up of about six players, and given the fact that there's usually one or two that are dead, a push can be a total of four players at a time. And if Bastion can pretty much eliminate all of those players single-handedly, you can see just how powerful of a character he can be. He's pretty much useless, though, unless he actually has his teammates supporting him. You can put him in really good locations, but unless he's got team support, then he will get flanked. People will get up behind him. There's a few good spots that are very hard to flank in. That's basically what it comes down to learning Bastion's skill, is that you just have to know the spots on the map that are extremely good points for Bastion to be. And you can learn those spots without even playing Bastion. Uh, if you play against the Bastion, you see a spot that's extremely good for him, then uh, that'll just tell you, hey, when I play Bastion next time, maybe I should hook up in that spot over there. Now, characters that can counter Bastion relatively well are Hanzo. He has his um, shot that splits into multiple pieces. You can shoot that directly behind Bastion if he's next to a wall, and that will do massive damage, sometimes killing him in one shot. Uh, Hanzo's ultimate ability, when aimed at Bastion, can also at least force him to move, and if he doesn't move, it's pretty much game guaranteed death. Reaper can also teleport behind Bastion and quickly kill him with his dual shotguns before he has uh, the chance to sort of transform and try and defend himself. So that's good. Winston can potentially jump on top of Bastion, put a shield down. There's a bunch of characters that are okay against him. If you're playing Pharah, uh, you can basically quick peek Bastion and keep shooting rockets at his shield. And if he can't deal enough damage to you, since you can shoot those from pretty far away, you can ultimately take down Bastion's shield and do enough damage. He is is vulnerable to multiple characters hitting him from long range as long as you have the ability to quick peek him rather than just standing out in the open. 
Now, especially if you team up with two long-range characters like Widowmaker and Farah, you can continuously peak Bastion. He can't deal enough damage to you at longer ranges, and you can ultimately take down his shield and then kill him. But likewise, if somebody teams up with Bastion, like a Reinhardt, and he put, puts his shield in front of Bastion, all of a sudden Bastion has a huge amount of shield power, and it can be very hard to take him out. So just as teaming up against Bastion can be very effective, having Bastion team up with other characters can be even more effective. And he is a hard character to deal with especially if you don't know where he's located and that's the whole benefit to moving around with him as a character as you set up in different locations people think bastion's out of the picture they'll run in on a point try and cap it and if you're not aware of a bastion in a good point he can deal massive damage potentially just stopping your entire assault now, I kind of forgot to mention how Bastion works. If you're not familiar with Overwatch, he just transforms into a turret that puts a shield in front of him. He can't move around, but his main gun is a minigun and it deals massive damage. When you untransform from turret position, you can just walk around and you have sort of like a little carbine weapon. He's not particularly effective in this combat mode. It's mostly his travel mode, but he can kill people in a pinch if he needs to. And then when his ultimate is charged up, he transforms into a tank that does massive splash damage and also has a lot of armor and health. His ultimate can be crazy effective when people are charging your position or charging a point that you need to defend. Transforming into this tank can just deal with so many characters at once. He has massive burst damage capabilities. He also has the ability to repair. If you just hold E, a little robot arm comes out and he starts self-repairing, which is pretty darn cool if you actually take damage to your character. I ended up using this ability probably the least because if somebody's charging you and they actually get through your shield damage, then chances are you're gonna be dead before you can actually repair. But it's nice not having to 100% rely on a healer. You can't, however, shoot while repairing. So that's the downside, of course. Now, based on the gameplay that I'm showing you in this video, you might conclude that Bastion's just like an automatic win if you're playing defensively, and he's really not. You absolutely have to have your team working with him in order to be good. Just like any other character in Overwatch, it's very much a team-based game. And unless your team is being a really good distraction, then Bastion is basically a sitting duck, and he's not going to hold up well on his own. And I found that in several games where my team would sort of push up the defensive line too far, and then they would wipe and I would have like four or five characters charging me it was pretty hard to deal with them all and I almost always failed so basically you need to be together with your teammates Bastion can't be the only defensive threat uh, he has to have his whole team there backing him up Anyway, uh, I love this character. He's fun. He's definitely campy, but he's designed around that play style. And once you start playing Overwatch, you will understand his importance. As always, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap signing off.